Hello everybody and welcome back to another Tech Tree Overview. And today I'm going to go over all the Russian cruisers, starting with this one at Tier 2, the Novik. Being a Tier 2 ship, however, there's not really much to say about her. Uh, she's got 820mm guns and 5 of them per broadside. They have a pretty high shell arc, 11.25 uh, seconds to travel the maximum 10.1 kilometers, which means when you fire the shells are going to take a while to get down. 120mm does mean you actually benefit from basic and advanced firing training, but again, at the lower tiers, unless you want to go down with a high skill captain to go seal club, you're not really going to have access to those skills. Aside from that, she's a reasonably fast ship going 25 knots with pretty decent maneuverability, 4 second rudder shift, 500 meter turn radius. In terms of detectability, she is the easiest ship to detect, she has the highest detectability. And you know, but at tier 2, it doesn't really make all that big of a difference. Uh, you know, aside from all that, she is a pretty decent tier 2 cruiser, but nothing really to write home about. Tier 3, however, is where things get interesting, because you get the Bogater. And the Bogater is what can best be described as the Russian St. Louis. And depending on how you like your ship, she's either a little bit better than the St. Louis or a little bit worse. But she's pretty comparable, and so here's the reason why. The St. Louis has slightly better armor, uh, but the Bogater is a tiny bit faster, going 24 knots compared to 22 on a St. Louis. In terms of turning circle radius and rudder shift time, they're all pretty similar, the St. Louis edging the Bogater a little bit on rudder shift time. Concealment wise, 10.3 kilometers is okay for a ship at this particular tier. But where the Bogater is interesting is in the guns. The Bogater has 152mm 45 caliber guns or 130mm 55 caliber guns. Now, here's where there's a bit of a. Um, yeah, here's a little bit, you know, if you look on things on paper, it's not going to be that accurate. If you take a look at the modules and you look at the 152mm guns, they appear to have a better rate of fire, they appear to do better damage. So you might be looking at this and going, well, why would I upgrade to the 130mm guns? What's the difference? Where the difference lies in between the 130mm gun and the 152mm guns is that the 130mm guns has a much better shell arc. If you look at the 152mm guns, to the maximum range of 11.4ish kilometers, it takes the shells roughly 9.5 seconds to get there, which means that when you fire your guns, you'll see your shells sort of go off your screen before they come back down. With the 130mm guns to the same 11.4 kilometer range, shells are going to get there roughly in 8.6 seconds. So what, you, what you're going to see the difference is that when you use the 130mm guns and you fire, you can actually see your shells as they go across your screen. And that is a pretty substantial difference in terms of arcs. Also, from my gameplay experience so far, I also found the 130mm guns to actually provide uh, slightly better penetration, although I'm not actually sure about the penetration numbers. At least from experience, from playing it, that's what it feels like. One of the other advantages of the 130mm guns is that they actually benefit from basic and advanced firing training. So if you actually throw basic firing training in there and advanced firing training, the guns will have more range and they will reload a bit faster. So, you know, overall, pretty solid guns. If you compare its rate of fire to the St. Louis, it is actually a little bit slower, but there is one extra shell per salvo. So, you know, uh, your choice on which you think is better there. But other than that, I mean, the Bogater is quite literally a Russian St. Louis, and they're pretty comparable. The next ship after the Bogater is the Tier 4 cruiser, the Svetlana. Now, the Svetlana is, well, you can best describe it as a Bogater and a Kuma decided to fuse together and create a love child, and ta-da, you have this thing. The Tier 4 Russian cruiser has less broadside firepower than the Bogater does, only 8 guns per broadside. However, she does gain torpedoes. But first, let's talk about the guns. The guns, well, the main difference is they have even better arcs than the Bogater. The guns are still the same size, 130mm, which means similar damage. However, to cover 113 kilometers takes roughly 7.2 seconds. So, really, really nice arc. However, the guns have a really painfully slow rate of fire, only 6 rounds a minute, which means it takes 10 seconds to get a salvo off, so that's really not that good. However, the Svetlana does have torpedoes. Their torpedoes aren't all that great. Um, they go 5 kilometers, which is a usable range. They do 7,233 damage, which is on the low side. And they go 52 knots, which is kind of slow. However, they do have phenomenal arcs. If you look on the Svetlana, 
The torpedoes look like they're located near the rear of the ship. However, they have arcs that make the Otago jealous. If you actually look at the arc, you can pretty much get arcs off as your ship is pretty much pointed to the front. So this Vilana does have amazing arcs for its torpedoes. There is one thing to keep in mind about these torpedoes. These ones in the middle here, they're reasonably well protected. The ones here on the stern, whoop, oh, not this one. The ones on the stern, they are rather easy to get knocked out. Um, so as they're you know, basically in the open, so they are pretty vulnerable to shell fire. So do expect to lose the rear torpedoes more frequently. Although the middle ones do tend to be reasonably secure. The ship itself uh, goes 29 knots, which is not very fast at tier 4 compared to the other cruisers at this tier. Uh, she's slower than both the Kuma and the Phoenix. Her 590 meter turn radius is actually okay, however the 7.2 second rudder shift time is slow. And this is going to be a thing about most of the Russian cruisers. They have a tendency of all sort of turning like bricks. They don't turn very, very quickly. Um, and surprisingly, uh, the Svetlana is actually the stealthiest of all the tier 4 cruisers, having a surface detectability of only 9.9 kilometers. So up until about tier 4, I would still say the Russian cruisers are, well, they're, they're, they're solid ships. They're solid ships, and they're very, very comparable to their peers. The first cruiser on the Russian line that can be considered pretty unique is this one, and that's the Kirov at tier 5. The Kirov is you know, a ship with heavy cruiser guns, but with light cruiser armor. So the Kirov comes with three triple 180 millimeter guns. These guns do solid damage. They have good punch. Range is good. Uh, the Kirov's max range of 16.3 kilometers also comes along with a pretty good arc. It only takes the shells 11 seconds to get out to max range. Uh, the turret traverse is also really good, uh, roughly 22 seconds or so to have the turret traverse 180 degrees. So in, in terms of guns, um, the Kirov's guns are solid. They are very, very good guns. Rate of fire is also pretty good. Um, one reload every 15 seconds, uh, four rounds a minute rate of fire. So all, all, everything about the guns, really, really solid. The Kirov also has torpedoes. Uh, she's got two triple launchers. The torpedo range is four kilometers, so these are more like desperation torps than anything. Um, the torpedoes are okay. They do decent amounts of damage. The Kirov has the best AA at tier 5. She's actually got really, really solid anti-aircraft. So all these things are good. So what's wrong with the ship? Well, the Kirov has kind of shoddy armor. And not only that, she's also really big and she's not very maneuverable. Her speed is really nice. She has a very, very fast ship. She goes 35.5 knots. But the turning radius is 860 meters, so when you start to turn, the ship takes a good chunk of time to actually turn around. Rudder shift is also not that impressive, 7.8 seconds. And to make everything worse, she's also really easy to detect with a surface detectability of 14.2 kilometers. Battleships are going to be the Kirov's biggest nightmare, because if they can see you, and they can shoot you, and they can hit you, you are going to suffer. The best way to play the Kirov is somewhat similar to how you would play a German cruiser like the Konigsberg. Um, there's a lot of staying at range, a lot of wiggling, a lot of maneuvering, don't stay in straight lines because if you stay in a straight line you're gonna get hit and you're gonna suffer. But the Kirov is actually even more difficult to play than the Konigsberg because the Kirov has that god-awful turn radius so even when you're trying to get your ship to do that wiggle she's sluggish and so the main prey of the Kirov is other cruisers so go after them first and then when you've dealt with the cruisers and there's still other ships on your team and you can help them out with a battleship lend supporting fire from range because you do have that beautiful arc and your guns are pretty solid just don't expect to get into a one-on-one -on -one fight with a battleship and get out of it alive. Um, other than that, I would still say this Kirov is a pretty solid ship. The next ship in the line after the Kirov is, well, possibly one of the best cruisers in the Soviet line, and that's the Budioni. Hopefully I got the name right. And the best way I can describe the Budioni is that the person who designed the Bogota looked at the St. Louis, went, how can we make it better? And... That's sort of what they did with this ship, too. They looked at the Cleveland and went, how can we make it better? And this is the result. The Bidioni is a really, really solid ship. First of all, let's talk about the armor. She's actually got pretty decent armor. In fact, out of all the 
uh, light cruisers that are on the Soviet line, she has the second best armor behind the tier 10 Moskva. So phenomenal armor. And her guns are really, really solid too. She's got three triple 152 millimeter guns, not as many as the Cleveland, but in terms of rate of fire, the damage of shells and everything, they're pretty much identical to the Cleveland's, except they do about 100 extra damage for uh, the AP shells. In terms of the church reverse, it's also faster, but the most amazing thing about all the Russian ships is their arc, and once again, the Bidioni has an arc the Cleveland can only dream of. Out to 16.6 kilometers, the shells only take about 11 seconds to get out to max range, so that's really, really nice. Furthermore, the Bidioni also has torpedo tubes. She's got uh, sort of these sort of panic torpedoes, last stitch torpedoes, however you want to call those. Um, two quintuple launchers, 533 millimeter torpedoes. They only go four kilometers, but in terms of damage and speed, they're all really decent. Uh, they're capable of 14,400 damage, and they go 65 knots, so these are actually solid torpedoes. The Bidioni has the second best AA out of any of the tier 6 cruisers, which is, you know, pretty decent. Not as good as a Cleveland, but still really, really decent AA. The Bidioni is also really fast. She goes 35 knots. And unlike a lot of the other Russian ships, she actually turns reasonably well. 710 meter turn radius with a pretty good rudder shift time of 6.9 seconds. Surface detectability is pretty comparable to all the other tier 6 ships. So, you know, the Bidioni is actually one of the best, I think, ships out of the entire Russian line, and I think she's a solid tier 6, and we'll see plenty of action in uh, team battles and things like that where tier 6 is going to be played, although in EU it's going to be a different tier, but at least on NA, uh, for team battles, this ship I think you will see quite a bit more uh, during team battles. Moving on to the ship after the Bidioni, and you have the Shores, and... Well, the designer who designed the Bidioni uh, was fired by Stalin, uh, or so rumor says, and uh, somebody else replaced him, and Stalin said, we want to build aircraft carriers, and the designer says, well, we Soviet industry can't build aircraft carriers, and so um, they built this cruiser instead, and the thing about this cruiser is that they looked at what was great about the Bidioni and went, hey, we can add an extra gun to that, so they added an extra triple 152 millimeter turret, but then they made everything else worse. Well, the Bidioni had 140 millimeters of armor. The Shores has up to a maximum of 75 millimeters of armor, which just so you know, at tier seven means you pretty much have no armor. And then what else they did was, well, they made her a brick. Actually, she's more like a bathtub made of bricks trying to sail around the ocean. Um, she's still pretty fast. She goes 35.5 knots and she has basically the identical gun to the Bidioni, so there's nothing special about that. Um, everything else is pretty similar in terms of uh, her AA, her torpedoes, her main guns, they're all pretty similar. She does get the extra triple turret, but the big difference between her and the Bidioni lies in that maneuverability category. She's still really fast, 35 and a half knots, but she has a turning radius of 900 meters. This is a turning radius that is about on par with tier seven aircraft carriers. I mean, the battleships turn in a tighter circle than this ship. The Shores also comes with a 7.1 second rudder shift time, so she's not exactly a very quick ship to turn either. So, yeah, I mean, that coupled with the surface detectability of 13.3 kilometers, and you've kind of got the massive stinker on the Russian line. After you finally manage to grind your way through the shores, or free XP past it, you finally get to the tier 8 Chapayev, which is better than the shores, but still somewhat underwhelming. The Chapayev is sort of like an underwhelming Mikhail Kutasov. Uh, she's similar to the Kutasov, at least in terms of armor, although she has slightly less HP. She's got the same number of guns, four triple 152 millimeter guns. These guns have pretty solid rate of fire. Uh, they have less range than the Kutasov, only 17.3 kilometer range versus a 19.1 on the Kutasov. The, sh the flight time to the max range of 17.3 is pretty good, 11.8 seconds. She's got two triple uh, torpedo tubes. They do 17,933 damage. They go 65 knots, but they only have four kilometer range, which is sort of a panic torpedo. She's got AA, but they're worse than the ones on the Mikhail Kutasov. So again, sort of underwhelming all around. 
In terms of speed, she is 0.5 of a knot faster than the Kutuzov, so that's nice. She's still slower than the IJN cruisers, though, at this tier. But much like the Shores, the turning radius is an abysmal 890 meters. So don't expect your ship to um, turn quickly at all. This then coupled with an even longer rudder shift time of 7.7 .7 seconds, even with a rudder shift module, is pretty brutal. And this ship just doesn't really maneuver all that well. She's not very agile. So overall, not a very, very agile ship. And with the fact that she has light armor, it's not a ship you want to get close to things with. So again, like many of the other Russian ships, stay at range. Use the nice arc to land hits. And that's kind of the thing that you have to learn with these Russian ships. Surface detectability of 11.9 kilometers with the module is better than the Kutuzov, which is 13 kilometers. But still, I mean, if you get spotted and you're within that 11-ish, 12-ish kilometer range and there's battleships around there shooting at you, you are going to be in trouble as she doesn't have the armor to really resist that kind of firepower. So after two pretty underwhelming ships, you get to tier 9, and that's the Dmitry Donskoy. And, well, the ship is interesting. She's very different than all the other cruisers you're going to find at tier 9. First of all, she's got four triple 180mm guns. Most of the other cruisers, heavy cruisers at this tier, have 203mm um, guns. So she's got this 180mm caliber. But this 180mm caliber does come with a pretty solid rate of fire of 5.5 .5 rounds a minute. So that's pretty nice. Um, her turret traverse time is really quick, 27.1 seconds stock, which is faster after you get the expert marksman skill on the captain. The range of the guns is really good, 178 kilometers, and the shelf flight time to that max range is only about 10.5 seconds. So that's also very, very, very good. She has usable torpedoes. She's got two quintuple launchers, one on each side. They can reach out to 8 kilometers, although these torpedoes are the 55 knot 14,400 damage variety. So, not very, very fast torpedoes, but still they're there, and they can offer a pretty good last-ditch weapon. AA, she's actually got the best AA out of all the Tier 9 cruisers. Uh, her AA is even better than that on the Baltimore, so that's a surprising aspect of the Dimitri Gonskoy. In terms of maneuverability, she's really, really fast too. 36 knot speed, really fast. If you throw on a speed flag, this ship can really zip around. Turning circle radius, surprisingly, drops to 760 meters. All of a sudden, the Russian ships remembered how to turn, so yay for that. However, rudder shift time goes up to a pretty painful 8.4 seconds. Yikes. Um, this again, it's going to be this thing about the Russian ships. Stay at range, hit things at range. Whatever you do, don't even get into that sort of intermediate 15 kilometer range. Stay outside of that. Use your long range and the beautiful arcs to go hit stuff. And that's kind of the, the rule of thumb with these ships. With the concealment module, the Dmitry Donskoy has a spotting range of 14.4 kilometers. You're really going to need the concealment skill here to get that number lower because 14.4 with the module and like 16 without, if you get spotted, you are going to get focused. And again, with light cruiser level armor, tier 9, you're not going to be able to repel firepower of that magnitude. Still, with the nice arcs and the pretty solid guns that you know hit for solid amount of damage, this is actually a decent ship. Just don't expect to get into any kind of brawling fight and come out on top, because she will not win. And finally, after all this hard work, you reach this thing. The Moskva, which can be best described as a battleship cruiser. Because she is the size of a battleship, she does have a really large HP pool, 65,400 HP. But she's got cruiser level armor, maximum 170 millimeters, which is okay when angled against other cruisers, but if you run up against things like, oh, Yamatos and Montanas, you're gonna suffer. The Moskva does have one thing going for her, which is these incredible 225 millimeter, 65 caliber guns, which have an incredible arc. I mean, these guns, if we just look at them, have a pretty solid rate of fire. Uh, if you equip a reload module, which you should probably equip because you're going to stay at range with the ship. So if you have the reload module equipped, you have a 6.6 .6 round rate of fire. You have a 39.4 second turret traverse, which isn't really that big of a deal when you're actually staying at 19.4 kilometer range. The shell dispersion is pretty decent, her max HE damage, her AP damage, all pretty decent, 3100 HE, 5800 for the AP, 17% chance of causing a fire. 
and the guns are able to reach out to 19.4 kilometers. But what's fantastic about these guns is that arc. For a lot of ships, to get to that kind of range, the shells will take in excess of probably 11 or 12 seconds for the shells to get there. The Moskva can reach out to that range with its shells in an astounding 9.88 seconds, which means you have a laser pointer with the ship. Just pretty much point in the direction, lead a little bit, bam, and your shells are getting there. And that's the Moskva's strength, her main guns. But her weaknesses is two aircraft and two tier 10 battleships. Her AA is okay. She can defend herself, but she's a huge target. And especially with the tier 10 dive bombers that the US have right now, even if you use the defensive fire ability, you're not going to be able to avoid some of those bomb hits. So there's a huge amount of damage that you'll take from CVs. And of course, you're huge and unmaneuverable. So let's take a look at her maneuverability stats. Her maximum speed of 34.5 knots is actually pretty decent. Her turn radius of 760 meters is not bad, but the rudder shift time of 8.7 seconds is sluggish. The Moskva doesn't really like to turn that much, and her rudder is not very responsive. So what ends up happening potentially is that, you know, if a battleship is shooting at you, it's not that easy for you to dodge and weave, and sooner or later you're going to get caught by salvo, and that salvo is going to hurt. Earlier today, I accidentally uh, ran into another ship, got slowed down a little bit, exposed a tiny bit of broadside, took a salvo from a North Carolina, and ate like 30 plus thousand in damage. And that still really hurts. The surface detectability of the Moskva is... Well, I mean, with the full skills and module and everything, you got 14.3 kilometer concealment range, which is not good at all. And that means you have to be really careful. And the key thing about playing the Moskva is positioning. Positioning is everything with the ship. In the right positions all the time, and you're going to do great with the ship. You make a mistake, you're caught out in the ship, and you're going to pay for it heavily. So definitely when you're playing the ship, take that into consideration. Still, the Moskva is an absolutely solid tier 10 cruiser. And, you know, going through all the other ships in the tier to get to this ship is definitely going to be a pretty good reward at the end. Now, um, two other things I want to talk to you guys about the Russian cruisers. One of them is once you get to tier 8, which is the Chapayev, the tier 9, the Dmitry Donskoy, and the Moskva, you have access to radar. Radar allows you for a short period of time for the tier 8 and 9 for 20 seconds and tier 10 is 25 seconds, out to 11.7 kilometers through smoke screen and everything, you can pick up ships. So if you're in a destroyer and you see one of these things within 11 point, you know, seven kilometers of you, uh, hiding in smoke and trying to shoot from it does not work. So be careful if you're around one of these ships. If you get distracted and you fight destroyers and you don't pay attention, this thing can light you up from within your smoke and you will be hurting as you know once you get picked up and you're stationary you make for an easy shot also let's take a look at the recommended captain skills i would recommend on a 15 point captain that you go for situation awareness first you get expert marksman second go for vigilance in third get demo expert as that will help set things on fire or alternatively you can't get advanced firing training if you do want to increase your AA defense some more so that is something for you to think about and finally, on the last slot, get Concealment Expert. These ships are so large with such a high detectability, you need to be able to get concealed. Once you get through the first 15 points, your remaining points, you can commit to potentially Superintendent, Basic Firing Training, uh, Ship Survivability. Those are all up to you. Anyways, folks, that completes the overview of these Russian cruisers. Of course, if you have any questions about these ships, um, you can leave a question in the comment section below, and I will try my best to answer those questions. Aside from all that, I hope you all enjoyed this tech tree overview. Have a good one, and I'll talk to all of you again soon.